All right, so I'll wrap up the show here. Uh, we today are supporting 10 parks like Mirador and like Demai. Um, as you know, it does take takes funding. And I can promise you one thing is that all the money that we're raising is going straight to the projects that we're supporting. And I think it's really important to understand why we pick the projects that we pick. Because there's a lot of parks out there in developing countries, they all need help, but money doesn't necessarily save things unless the things are right. I call it the stars aligning. You need great leadership, you need a great engineer on the ground, you need a great park director. We go, we sit around and look at 40 parks at a time and the park directors, they change every three years and if you have a bad park director, you can't do anything. And so you, you're a sit and wait position. Um, we're working in both marine parks and in April we're going to have events uh, uh, on the, our marine protection where we use marine radars like boats use and protect marine areas with, with boats and rangers and, um, and land parks like car cardamoms. But basically each park we're going through the same process. We're helping them with surveillance and intelligence. You saw that with Raheem. Um, smart patrolling to, so you can get rapid response to people coming in getting communication. Most of the parks we work, they can't even call, uh, they don't have cell phones, they don't have radios. So we're trying to get them so that they actually can respond to things uh, and training equipment are critical and it's direct protection. So you look at using satellites for identifying where there's fires and land clearing so you can go and get those guys. Using drones to go out mostly to, to map uh, deforestation, uh, using the sensors and the cameras to catch people. One of our uh, projects, the biggest success is we just got six million dollars this just two months ago from Shell Oil. It's the largest funding ever by any polluter in the world. Uh, Exxon is a is a hundred billion dollar a year company. They give sixteen million dollars, sixteen million out of a hundred billion a year to help in uh, avoided deforestation. So little things here. So Cardamons is, is the last piece of Cambodia that has forest left. They've lost everything. Everything's fractured and destroyed. The Cardamons is the last place left that has, they have 300 elephants, but it's burning up just like we're happening here. They're, they're burning the place down to grow pepper. They set up pepper plants. They're shooting the wildlife and killing everything. And they're going in there. These are Chinese companies. They're planting um, palm oil or bananas or whatever, uh, rubber. This is the type of deforestation that happens. They are so good at it. They can come in and with three months, that's that's probably one month of work. Okay? They come in with the, with the tractors and the thing. They're so organized. They can destroy so much forest so quick. And you have to be able to fight them legally. So you need to work. I believe that national parks are the last bastion that we have. If you just take an unprotected area and say, we're going to try to save that, there's no chance in hell that it's going to be there. It will be gone. And if it's not a national park, if it's not an internationally recognized UNESCO World Heritage, having visitors and having great people like this. So what, what this place does, they have one uh, leader. He's the key guy in each of the ranger stations. This, this park has eight ranger stations. He gets paid pretty well, and usually he's from a place like Ukraine, or he's a French soldier. This guy's actually Cambodian in this case. But he has to organize the government troops who won't do anything if he's not there hammering them to get the job done. And it's this type of uh, kind of hybrid organization that's so important. Then bring the technology in. These are uh, cameras that go up in the trees with solar panels so they can monitor 24-7 the people coming in, uh, giving them communications, taking out these walls and walls of, of nets that they're putting up for miles and miles to catch every animal that walks by and confiscating hundreds and hundreds of chainsaws. If you're, if this is a picture of success in my book, it's a problem, but this is, this is the best picture you can have. Hundreds of chainsaws getting confiscated every year and, they, and they've got money to fly helicopters so they can actually see illegal stuff happening in real time. Uh, get out there, do the training of the, of the troops, and then bring in the technology. These guys on the top, they came in, two hours later, you send in the troops, you arrest them, there's 50 guys there, and these camera networks can really help shut down uh, in an area. In this case, there, there's hundreds of these people coming in, carry, these are being carried out on their back. This is the last of the rosewood of Asia. So there's, they've already taken all the teak, 
all the mahogany. Mm -hmm. Now they're going back for the roses. So everything's gone. This is the last of the, of the hardwoods of Asia is being taken out as we speak. So we're losing the very, very last. We're talking about extinction of animals. This is the extinction of entire species. Using technology like Earth Ranger from uh, Paul Allen, who just passed last year, uh, yeah, put, his, put millions of dollars to develop software to run parks and do protection. So all the radio calls, all of the uh, uh, alerts from these cameras, and the uh, ranger reports all come in and can be seen. And now it's, people are using satellites. There's amazing satellites. Uh, there's a company right down the street called Planet. They put 200 satellites in orbit. They take a picture of the Earth every day down to about five meters. So from here to there, you got a picture of the Earth every day. So you can do amazing things to identify fires and forest loss in these parks. So you see these little red dots in these parks. You can send rangers right there that day that you see that there's loss. So that's very different. You saw the fires in Mirador. These are uh, NASA uh, alerts that come in daily that talk about uh, firing. And this and the this is uh, we saw this photo before. These little squiggles here are all the logging roads. So how, that looks like uh, one of those cheese things. I mean, how can you the Swiss cheese? I mean, how can you protect a place that has thousands of roads? Anyone can ride a motorcycle in there and kill everything. So this is what Raheem is having to deal with in his work every day. Uh, very open. We've got great, if you ever met Greg Asner, you got it, you got to meet him. He's now transferred from Stanford. We lost him. He went to ASU, runs the Global Discovery. We're giving him hundreds of thousands of dollars to map our parks for the carbon so we can get more of these $6 million chunks of money for the protection of those parks. The drones have been pretty much a disaster, uh, a lot of hype and no delivery. But these guys on the ground take these really cheap drones and they go and fly and they identify illegal clearing and map that, take it back to the mayors, to the governors of the provinces, and then send out uh, patrols to go and shut them down. This is a great example. They flew the drone over. This, this is the uh, governor's son hired a bunch of things to go and drain this swamp, clear it to go put palm oil, palm oil in, and we shut him down and he's in jail. This tractor got confiscated. And that's the kind of things that we can do if we, if we put the systems together with the right people. And we can save some of these animals and pristine places like this. So we hope uh, you'll all support the work that these guys are doing, that you'll come visit. Uh, we're trying to get organized so we can actually get out to these places safely and do, go deep in and see the orangutans, see the elephants, uh, because that's the way that it really touches you and you'll never uh, stop saving these places. So. But thank you very much for coming.